Welcome to the second part of this tutorial series where we're using Photon Fusion 2 and XR add-ons to build a multi-user cross-platform game or application. In this video we'll look at some of the key concepts and use the XR creation guide menu to create and modify the scene. Our goal is to create a MetaQuest and Apple Vision Pro multi-users application with finger tracking, voice synchronization, ability to grab including remote grabbing for Vision OS. Following the first video, you should now have access to the XR add-on menu in Windows Fusion XR XR Creation Guide and XR Creation Logger. The menu buttons will help you add objects or prefabs to the scene. It will also edit the prefabs according to the features added to the project. Here, the log viewer explains in details what steps have been achieved when pressing those buttons. We will start by adding networking capabilities to the scene. So the first things to do is to add a network runner. The network runner is a core component that is actually running the Fusion simulation, and we need it to be able to use Fusion and connect online. Also, the button added a connection manager because Fusion requires several things to be started. We need to define what is the topology that we will use. Here, the shared mode topology. We also need to say to which room we will connect or if we will use matchmaking. And finally, we have to select which prefab will be spawned when a user connects. Before going any further, let's take a look at what it means to make a networked immersive application. First, we need a way to collect the user device information. Then we have to share it over the network. Finally, we have to display it for other users. There are several ways of doing this. What we suggest is to separate the hardware part from the network part. The rig hardware collects the positions of the rig, head, and hands. While the local player's network rig retrieves this information and shares it over the network. So in an actual app, you will have this kind of setup. Each user has an hardware rig and a local network rig that follows it. Network rigs are synchronized everywhere so that other users can see them. So in XR add-ins, we have prepared the hardware rig component that can be used for synchronization. The created rig itself is a basic rig that you can find in any single player XR application. The tracking itself can be done with classic components, ever track pose driver, or components using the input device API directly. So thanks to the add-on and the assicated prefabs, you don't have to manage that yourself. Now let's move on the network part itself. The spawned prefab for each player must contain a network object. It gives the object a network identity so that all peers can reference it and handles things like who has the authority. Then you can add synchronized component on the prefab. One component available in the Fusion SDK is the network transform which automatically synchronizes the game object transforms position and rotation to other clients. So at the end, for each network rig, we have one network object and several network transforms. The network transform component also handle the interpolation, which allows smooth movements between ticks. Indeed, Fusion stores and synchronizes application states at regular intervals called ticks. And then, during each updates, it provides to your network behaviors the closest ticks recorded around a fixed position a bit in the past. It allows to smooth the data. In the case of network transform, the positions and rotation are interpolated in this way. So for the networking part, first we have to create a prefab using this button. Here we go. This prefab will be spawned each time a player connects. At its roots, we have a network object that will be used by Fusion for identification and authority. Also, we have a specific script called Network Rig that tracks the local hardware rig. So this component here is tracking the local hardware for the local user, and it will move the associated rig parts, left hand, right hand, headset, to follow the matching hardware rig parts. And finally, for this various rig parts that we want to track, we have a network transform to synchronize positions and rotation. 
Now we can come back to the scene and check that this network rig prefab is set in the connection manager, so it will be spawned each time a player connects. At this stage, it would be possible to launch the application, but this wouldn't be very interesting as players don't yet have any graphical elements. For testing purposes, we added an avatar on the network rig with simple hands that follow the controllers and animate according to the controller's buttons. Now let's test the result with a second client who has synchronized the Unity project. On the top right, you can see the Unity editor of the second player. As you can see, now there are two network rig in the scene. One for the local player which replicate the hardware rig, and one for the remote player with replicate remote player movement thanks to the network transforms. Now we will add voice capabilities to our players. To do that, click on the Add Voice button. It adds the Fusion Voice Client component, which ensures that Photon Voice connects at the same time, then Fusion to the proper room. Also, it added the Recorder component under the runner. The recorder captures the audio source, compresses audio data, and broadcasts it in the room. Note that we have the Microphone Persmission script, as microphone access has to be requested on MetaQuest and Apple Vision Pro devices. Then, we have to add the voice capabilities to the user's spawned avatar. To do so, we go in the Network Rig Prefab section and click on the Add Voice button. As you can see, on the avatar's headset, we have added a voice network object and a speaker object that will route here the appropriate voice for that user. We have also added an audio source to be able to listen to it. Note that since we want the sound to be spatialized, we have to set a special blend to one. This ensures that the sound is properly reduced according to the distance. And finally, to have something a bit more visual, we can add a mouth with a basic lip synchronization on the network rig. The simple lip sync script, located at the network headset voice object, changes the mouth visuals according to the voice data received. Before going into a new run, let's see how to synchronize any application datas with Fusion. Aside from base components, you can create your own network behavior. A simple way to synchronize data is to add a networked property on your data, and Fusion will automatically synchronize from the state authority to the other users when the data is changed. These properties can also contain more advanced types, such as structs or arrays. We have used this to synchronize finger tracking data across the network thanks to data provided by the XR Hands package, that is cross platform. Of course, this can be quite bandwidth intensive. So, in the add on we are sharing, we have optimized it to drastically reduce the amount of data sent, cutting it by 90% with no visual impact. Now we can come back to the Unity editor to test lip synchronization and finger tracking. As you can see, we have now a precise fingers position, and the mouth of remote players is animated when the player is talking. For the last part of this video, we will focus on Apple Vision OS support. For Apple Vision OS, Unity provides a specific package, Polyspatial, that bridges Unity logic to the OS rendering capabilities. It also handles the operating system specific capabilities like the indirect pinches that allows to interact remotely. To simply handle this platform, we provide a specific vision helpers add-on that covers some of its specificities. Spatial touch for indirect pinches. Spatial grabber to allow grabbing with the spatial API and other helpers. So now we will set up our scene for Vision OS compatibility. A requirement for Vision OS application is to have a volume camera which will define if we have a full space application or if we have an application that is bounded to a shared volume. Here, we want a full space application. Some AR Foundation components are also required by Polyspatial, like AR Session. Some components also need to be added to the hardware camera. We have therefore configured them here automatically. We now want to be able to detect spatial touches. We just have to click on the Add Spatial Grabber button to update the hardware rig. Then, a Spatial Touch object is added with a Spatial Touch Handler component that will be able to detect up to two remote interactions. At the same time, we've added Spatial Grabbers that create fake hardware hands to be followed by the grabbed objects. 
Now we have to update the player's network rig in order to add the spatial grabber capabilities. As you can see, a network spatial grabber has been added. So it is the same as with hardware hands and network head. Here, the network spatial grabbers are fake network hands that will follow the fake hardware hands. So, they are at the position where the object has to be moved remotely, and it will be synchronized to the remote users. Finally, we come back to the scene and we add some grabbable cubes to test interactions. I have to change the position of the objects to place them in front of me where they can be caught. I put one to the left and one to the right. And that's it. We're finished and ready to test in the headsets. You can see that the user can use the spatial grabber to grab the cube. Please note that to test it on the Apple Vision Pro, first we have to compile the application and then deploy it on the Apple Vision Pro. For the MetaQuest, we can stay in the Unity editor. And that's it for this video. We hope that you enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.